All right, we have a doozy for you guys today. We are going two wheels. This is the Evolve Corsa. It's an electric scooter, but not any electric scooter. This is like the monster truck of scooters. This thing will do 50 miles per hour. It's got dual suspension. This thing is totally, totally sick. Not only is this the first e-scooter review on the channel, this is my first time riding an e-scooter, so this should be pretty interesting. So how did we get here? Well, we've been testing a lot of EVs lately, and without a charger at home, I've had to charge them at a station a few kilometers away. While waiting to charge, I really had the urge to go home and do some work and be a little more productive than sitting, uh, waiting, and just playing with my phone. And I just thought, boy, you know what? If I had an e-scooter to throw in the back of the trunk, I could go back and forth to home if I needed to, or I can go get a coffee. Walking would waste too much time both ways. I would ride my bike, however, most EVs that I was testing, they were on the smaller side, so my large bike would not fit in there and they didn't have a trailer hitch to put my bike rack on. So, e-scooter would be the perfect solution. I wanted to find a reputable dealer that would support the product I would buy since we're dealing with complex electrical devices with mechanical parts and these things are not cheap. I discovered Urban Makina. Turns out they're very well known in the industry and one of the very first all electric scooter shops in North America. And they just happen to be right here in Vancouver. I went in to check out some scooters because they carry a lot of different brands and a lot of different models. And they said, hey, we have a brand new pre-production model of our flagship Evolve Corsa. You wanna test it? Well, you know the rest. The Corsa is a real brute. Obviously, there are larger scooters out there, but this is definitely the largest one I've ever seen. One of my favorite things in the Corsa is the size of the deck. It's about 10 inches wide and has about 30 inches of usable length on it as well. So lots of room. You also get 11 inch tubeless knobby tires on the Corsa. And as you can see, this is a dual motor setup. Then you have two 1200 watt motors in the front and rear hubs. This is also equipped with front and rear coil suspension. This is gonna make a huge difference. On the other side of the wheel, we have dual hydraulic brakes by Zoom. Likewise, up front, I like where they placed it right in the middle. You get these two LEDs with halos around them. On the front deck, you have some driving lights and some accent lighting along the side. It would be nice to see a little bit more lighting on the side. In the command center, you have a large display, and below that, you do have a keyed ignition. In the rear, you have an LED tail light. As well, you have brake lights and signal lights on this particular model. The signal lights aren't really, really bright though, and they're quite low, so it's still better to have a signal on your helmet or on your jacket. I think these are placed here more for different jurisdictions where you're required to have signal lights on your vehicle in order to ride this on the street or in the bike lanes. One handy feature with the Corsa is you can lift the deck up and it's lockable and you don't even need a key. There's a combination, you just turn it and you can lift the deck up and remove that 60 volt battery. So if you wanna park it and you wanna take the battery out to charge inside or you just wanna take the battery into your office, you can do that. Now, apologies if the scooter is looking a little bit on the dirty side. I did my best to clean it after a couple of rides. However, this scooter is not waterproof, just like most of them. All the ports and openings have been covered, but you really should not get this extremely wet. And that includes spraying it down with water to clean it. Obviously when you're riding you're going to encounter some moisture whether you're going through a field and encounter some unexpected puddles or things like that. Here's a little perspective of the size of the Corsa next to one of my kids kick scooters. You can tell this definitely is no toy. The handlebars don't fold which means that it's not as portable but being one piece there is no play anywhere. It gives you a lot more confidence without any type of play. Folding the Corsa is pretty simple. You have a single clamp, but it's double wide, but just one, flick that up. Now, this will fold down. There is a loop here, and you just put that around the hook. There you go. 
She is ready for transport. Total weight though, it's 100 pounds. It is not the lightest thing to carry, but you do have nice handles to carry it when you do. To set it back up, take that, flick that up, and now just push that collar all the way down and clamp it. That's it, that quick. Before we go for a ride, there's one thing that we have to do. Brooklyn? You gotta have your safety gear, helmet, gloves at the minimum. I just wanna preface and remind you guys that this is my first e-scooter experience, not today, but this particular model. So I have nothing else to compare it to. So other than a lot of the specs and features that I'm gonna tell you about, this is just my opinion. Let's go. Turn that key, kickstand up, off we go. Oh yeah. When I first stepped onto the Corsa, I had no idea what to expect, considering it's it's just so big and it's heavy. It's a hundred pounds. Then once I got on it, I just realized how stable it is and how easy it is to ride. So you can see I have a thumb throttle on here. On the left hand side, I have my rear brake. Right hand side, I have my front brake. These are Zoom hydraulic brakes. And then over on the right side, I have a one, two, and a three selector. I can select it to number three. All right, for speed wise. And then you just go. turning our left turn signal on right now. And we're just gonna cruise over, over some bumps here. How about we go? Oh, big puddle. All right. We can go over into this little forested area. I have no idea where it's gonna take us. Oh, nope, don't like that. One of the first things you notice is when you step off the course, uh, you step down quite a bit. It's, it's really high. Essentially, you have about eight inches of clearance from the deck to the ground, which will clear pretty well any curb. But yeah, it's, it's pretty high. You're not supposed to jump it, but small little curbs at slower speeds. You got the clearance. It did not bottom on the deck at all. Now this deck size is great. It is so wide that you can go side by side if you chose to. Now this is interesting. To, this is sand, we're on sand right now. No problem, no problem. Now the grass, it'll do the grass, but the grass is quite wet right now. But we'll try to stay on the drier parts. Now, we mentioned top speed on this, 50 miles an hour. It's actually a little bit less. It's 48 miles an hour or 78 kilometers per hour. Plenty fast still, <laughs> absolutely. Now, to achieve that though, you have to go into dual motor mode. So underneath the throttle, there is a button, single or dual motor. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, Urban Makina, who supplied me this pre-production unit disabled the front motor. So we're only operating this as a single motor. And I'm telling you, at first I was like, good, I don't need two motors. This is gonna be plenty fast. And you know what, even at 50 kilometers an hour, this thing just wants to go and it's so easy to ride because it's so stable and that's where 
I thought that this thing was going to be really, really unstable at higher speeds, but it's completely opposite. With the weight of the unit plus the large wheels and the suspension, it's so maneuverable, it's so easy to move around. And when you hit even medium-sized bumps, for instance, like manhole covers or small potholes, it doesn't disrupt the system. Just check it out, it's, 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 it's so stable. But of course, if you had the second motor activated, it's going to bring you up closer to the top speed, plus it's gonna be easier on hills. Okay, this is gonna be a challenge. It is supposed to do 40 degrees of angle for hills. This is a big hill. And we only have the one motor, remember? And I am right now, unfortunately, about 195 pounds. So it's still pulling. We're doing 19 kilometers an hour uphill and where it's getting steeper here 17 we're dropping down pretty soon i might have to get off and start kicking maybe maybe not we're getting there all right and we're gonna speed up now here we go we did it all right that's impressive even with the single motor i'm still able to achieve decent top speeds. There's not an over abundant amount of torque though, which I think I was expecting a little bit more torque, but this is a 60 volt system. So it's, you can't really pull wheelies from that back torque at all. But yeah, this is something that you could cruise with this anywhere all day long. Just the freedom, it's just so easy to get in and out. And it's quick. We can easily hit 50K. There we go, there's 50. 51, and we'll, hard, not even that hard on the brakes. This does not have regen braking, by the way. You'd probably be able to achieve higher speeds as well if you had some proper street tires on, we have these knobby tires, which makes the ride a little bit on the rough side. But it's nice to have the ability to just to go and hit the gravel stuff, It'd be a little bit more stable. Yeah, this is a big difference. The range is rated at around 55 to 60 kilometers, which is around 38 miles or so. Now that is going to change depending on if you're using one or two of the motors and if you're going to climb a lot of hills. Those brakes are really good. I kind of feel like I'm surfing. Just kind of Go with the flow. One feature that would be nice to see is some sort of a walk feature. So we're going up my driveway right now, but imagine if you're in a public setting and you can't really ride it through a crowd or something, and you need to go uphill. And this is 100 pounds with really wide, uh, big knobby tires. So it can be a little bit difficult to push, especially if, if the ground's a little bit soft. And you can use a throttle, but it's a little bit, even on number one, it's not the smoothest thing, so a walk feature would be really nice just to, just to help you along a little bit, help you push a little bit more. Ooh, help me here. Head on, fast. All right, what do I think of this Evolve Corsa? It did not disappoint at all. You know, back in the day, in midlife crisis, you'd get a Corvette for a toy, I think. The new Corvette now is a hyper-electric scooter and a lot more affordable too. 
This thing not just looks cool, it's actually quite practical. If you wanted to actually use it to commute, you could commute with this with zero issue, being the extra weight, the power, the suspension of the wheels, it's very, very comfortable to ride at higher speeds. Also, it's a lot of fun. If you want to just boot around town or on a few trails with some buddies, hey, you don't need a pickup truck, you don't need a trailer, anything like that, just grab your helmet and just go. You don't burn any fuel. So a lot of fun. There are a few things that I do want to mention about this Corsa. Number one, I like the screen. I like the size of it. Those numbers are just really, really big for my aging eyes. However, uh, I wish there was some sort of a memory with it. For instance, once I turn off the scooter and turn it back on, it resets. Other than the odometer, everything resets. So the trip odometer resets. And it'd really be really nice if it would actually stay on there and have a couple different memories and that it doesn't have. Next thing is if you fold this, you have this red loop here and it hooks onto the folding hook. I really kind of find that hook not very comfortable in the position where it's at. Sure, I can actually rest my foot, my rear foot on the kick plate. That's what it's there for, right? However, sometimes, you know, this deck is so large that you might not want to put your foot all the way back there. And it just kind of sometimes hits that hook and um, yeah, it's a small thing. You know, if they could integrate it into that kick plate, it would be better. Or if you're using this and you're not folding it very often, you could easily just remove that hook altogether and that would be it. And then comes the biggest thing. This is my first exposure into the scooter world. And of course I had to start basically at the top. That's like going to the amusement park and going and picking the scariest roller coaster, doing it as your very first ride and then every ride after that is going to feel like you're going around the merry-go-round. So, but this is still the pre-production model. I'm hoping that when the production models come out that I can have a chance to get one of these back and try it with the dual motor configuration. Also, I do want to try out uh, something a little bit more portable and a little bit more affordable. If you want more information or you want to buy one of these Evolve Corsas or any other brands that Urban Makina carries, I'm going to leave an affiliate link in the video description. If you use that link, it doesn't cost you anything extra. It just helps the channel out a little bit and helps you make more videos like this and hopefully uh, a lot more on two wheels. Safe driving, safe riding. We'll see you in the next review. This is fun.